Okay, before we get into the other big what the effedness of this week, let's go over some of the other stuff. Um, I don't privacy. I think that's what we're supposed to talk about. Well, there, we, we, we'll get back into that in a minute, but um, it, it, it's... What do y'all think of these dot whatever domains the ICANN's proposing to start up next year? Have y'all heard about these? Uh, yeah, uh, I've heard of them. You can make a dot whatever domain and, you know... Yeah, like it could be dot, dot Google. You could, you could yeah. have you could have toys. You see, you could have privacy. Dot Google. Actually, we should go buy that as soon as it comes out. We should go buy privacy. Dot Google so we can explain why Google's bad <laughs> and, ruin, not, not and ruin Google's reputation and everything. But the, but that's the concern here, and that's what people are afraid of. That well, if, if I if I want my own dot, I can have a dot penis or something. Yeah, dot, dot brand name is basically what this should be looked upon, whatever your brand name is. But that's going to... Yo, this could be used for evil SEO work, you know? Well, no, that's the thing. These can be used for evil SEO work. This is exactly the type of domain name that you would have to buy to get good Bing results. Because if you, yes. no, if you notice, Bing really favors the URL... Uh, keyword structure. So if you really want to rank well for your brand, uh, brand, you'd almost have to buy this to get good Bing results all the time. And yeah. and there's nothing to stop. What why there is some things. Clever squatters are going to start exploiting brands and or doing damage. I, I see a lot of stuff going on. Uh, see, uh, almost efficient. I almost forgot about the fishing schemes too. Yeah. You know, it could be it could be like um, Microsoft at Microsoft. You know, or oh, you have a virus. Yeah, there'll be phishing schemes, there'll be people uh, just doing squatting, and there'll be people, like, you remember when BP spilled all that black stuff in a body of water and somebody went on Twitter and pretended to be the BP PR department and was just making fun of BP and basically making it BP's reputation far worse than it already was? What black stuff? Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. It's, I mean, it's, somebody set up a domain and started doing this. Eventually, you could probably subpoena them down or other stuff, but the damage yeah, is already done. Not forgetting the keyloggers. Yeah, the damage is already done. <laughs> Once you get into those keylogger homepages, you're screwed. But yeah, well, and the other thing that's bad about this, in my opinion, is it already costs too much to properly secure a band name. I mean, you have to buy the .com, the .net, the .info, the .org, the variations for all the countries. Do you really want to have to buy yet another domain every year just to secure your brand name? I mean, that's... Yeah. Yeah. Hey, maybe we can get one for your, for your name, you know? Hey, I could, fi I could finally have a domain name for my name. Because that's yeah. been really hard for me to have, given what my name is. That's true. <laughs> the rest of y'all don't get that joke. Kami's one of the few people here that actually knows what my name is. <laughs> oh. Okay, um, moving on to AT&T. Um, do we think this merger is going to actually be finalized and approved? I'm still thinking, in spite of all of this, yes. Yeah. Uh, that's a bubble thing. Yeah, well, it's T-Mobile customers a while ago were protesting outside of AT&T stores, and now apparently just over a thousand AT&T customers are suing AT&T, and AT&T, of course, being the loving company that they are, is counter-suing them for suing them, <laughs> so... Alright, how the hell does that work? They're <laughs> customers. What well, the hell do they do? Well, and how bad is this merger for the end consumer that AT&T customers are suing AT&T going, please don't merge with T-Mobile? The because they turn into the GSM monopoly of America? Is. What about those Verizon commercials against uh, T-Mobile? Like arbitration or something. There's some clause in the contracts. That's why AT&T suing their customers is about arbitration. Yeah, no, I, I have yet to see a single contract you make with any company where there isn't some clause in there that go, you agree to settle any disputes by bar binding arbitration in whatever the company's parent yeah. state is. So you're actually <laughs> signed your right to sue them away by agreeing to the terms of service. Yeah. Wow, that is fail. <laughs> How the hell does that work? the terms of service anyway by Say that again. When 
Wow, that that's a messed up mic. Yeah. <laughs> well, we apologize for the blah blah blah. blah. We're, we're not in the Charlie Brown universe. Don't worry, we'll have strong Christian overtones later. <laughs> Are we on the uh, French TV show with the alternate universe now? Could be, I don't know. <laughs> if you see a flying blimp, we'll know for sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, can you tell we're ha Wait, it's been too long since we've done a show? We're just having fun at this point. <laughs> it's like... Oh... Uh, no, I, 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 I heard every other word you said, Dark. Something about using the customer's money. Wouldn't they be violating their own terms of service anyway by changing the contract? Well, the, the, yeah, they would be violating if they did that, but the concern of the customers is that this is going to prevent competition and ultimately lead to price gouging. That's the complaint of the people, the AT&T customers that are suing AT&T. They go, we made a contract with an <coughs> honorable phone carrier that wasn't going to do price fixing, and now we think you're doing price fixing. <laughs> At least that's their complaint. Yeah, <laughs> and they are. Yeah, well, I, this is AT&T we're talking about, you know. It's America. They want to make money, so they're doing it. Exactly. <laughs> Well, no, when they got rid of all their unlimited data plans and they're kind of forcing everybody to say F you. And, and Sprint is being smart. They're taking advantage of the fact that they are the only carrier out there right now that really does offer unlimited data. This, uh, help me, Sprint, you are my only hope. Help me, Sprint, you are my only hope. <laughs> That's, and you got Verizon making put in T-Mobile now. Can't be roaming. Yeah, no, that that that's the thing. And T-Mobile's still making fun of AT and T, in spite of AT and T buying them and merging with them. Oh, I haven't gone through yet. <laughs> well, yeah, but they're still doing the ads. <laughs> it, 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 honestly, though, like because of the technicality you're saying with Sprint, I would rather buy Metro or Virgin or Boost, one of these alternative companies where their contract extends to everywhere, uh, everywhere they have a contract with, because like you said, with Sprint, it's you have to be on the Sprint thing. And anybody who's ever been on the Sprint network knows your phone may work over here, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're on Sprint anymore. <laughs> Yeah. Th that got better when they bought Nextel, but not enough better. And, and, and you know, that's... I'm in a semi-sprint area, but yeah. Well, but see, that's the growing trend in the cell phone industry. The good company gets bought by the bad company, and then there is no more good company. So choose your mediocrity. We need to have, like, the Vista wheel come back up and put all the cell phone companies and just... The choose a Vista. No, the choose your mediocrity. <laughs> so, and then we we'll just have Vista crossed out. We have, like, Home Basic crossed out with T-Mobile, and uh, we'll have, like, um, Star crossed out with Verizon. Yeah, we'll have a cell phone plan that doesn't cost you two hundred dollars crossed out for you know AT and T that's less than two hundred dollars and so on and so forth. <laughs> Round you'd go. Uh, okay, uh, this you were saying more stuff on the Google Dom. Uh, Google. Or, or did we kind of cover that all? I thought we'd kind of covered that to start with. Or did we leave something? Uh, I'm almost afraid that Google's going to say that you have to turn your camera to yourself and, in order to have an account with us. Yeah, I, I think that's coming. There, there's. It's going to be harder and harder. You have ideas. Well, here's the thing. If they, if that is their plan, which it wouldn't surprise me, they're going to have to be very tactful in how they do that. Because that's the surest way to wind up under federal regulation if they insist that to use any Google service, you have to do that. Now that's not with face tagging. Well, they have a valid reason to do it for the social thing, even though I disagree with it. Their argument for the social thing is that we want to make, in their exact words, than the words their little developer person got up and said, we want. Google Plus to be as much like real communication as possible. Okay, but how many of us go to a stranger on the street and go, hello, my name is blah, 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 blah? <laughs> it's like, does anybody actually do that? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Hello, my name is Jason Smith. I live 
lived on 344 um, Evergreen Terrace, you know. And, no, 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 no. You, you don't have to tell them the address. They're not making you do that. But we have services now like been verify and a, the dozen clones of it where literally all you need to know somebody's name, birth date, physical address, which then, if you're an unethical person, gives you social security number, driver's license, license plate number, and a whole score of other things, is no, name their number. name. <laughs> no, you don't even need their phone number. You get their name, you get their phone number, and everything else. Within five minutes, you can know their social security, date of birth, license plate, and where their car is. <laughs> <laughs> that is the world we live in. A name is not something to be given out arbitrarily. Not your full name. You know. Well, the truth is, we've been living in that world since the eighties. I know I mean, that, but people. No, since the fifties. Uh, I know, but people don't think that way. But the difference is, when you're walking around in day-to-day -day circles, nine out of ten people you're physically coming across are probably people that aren't going to do that to you. Now, there is that odd screwball who's going around doing social hacking who's just like, mm. <laughs> uh, but that's not most. When, as soon as you take that online and give that information to the billion-plus Internet users, you have now created a whole new playground for nefarious people. You know what? It would be, um, be very convenient if we had like a second social security number, like a backup one, like a lower priority one for like, well, okay, this is the people that's going to know this name with a lower priority, you know? The reality is your social security number was never supposed to be used for that. If you go, I know, but you know how people use it now. Well, no, I know that. And what's really funny is if you go apply like for a local government position, like at a mayor's office or something, they give you a four-page plus <coughs> document that explains your social security number is not supposed to be being used this way. But can we use it that way anyways? <laughs> if you say no, they'll say go screw you. Exactly. Yes. Um, well, can't you go sue them or what? I don't know. No, the, well, the reality is there's only four people who should have your social. Somebody who, um, somebody who's running a credit report on you. Not they plan to at some future day when they feel like it run a credit report. They're running it today. That person has a valid card, unfortunately, because that's the way we've set that system up. Person two that has a valid reason to have your social security number is somebody running a background check on you for security, which is hence the government job. The other person is somebody employing you, but the reality is they don't actually need your social security number. You can go down to the IRS, fill out a one-page form, say I want a taxpayer identification number because I don't want to give these SOBs my social, and the IRS is on. And then the other people that need your social is for paying taxes. But like I said, you can do that through a TIN. You don't need to be using your social. Other than that, they don't need it. We use it for upteen jillion more things. <laughs> anyway, uh, maybe we should talk about Web OS. Or yeah, OS. I was just gonna say that was the, uh, well. This did you have anything else to say on the Google them? I was just saying that uh, uh, we have had that information out since the 1950s, though. But back then, we had to hire detectives. Yeah, and, and back then it was a more innocent time. No, it was just took more time because everything wasn't interconnected. You had to be a private detective that went and did, dug through records for an afternoon as opposed to a 14-year-old kid who's pissed off who goes and digs through computers for 5 to 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh, looks like we've temporarily lost Dark. He may or may not return.